Hi everybody, Andrew Cuneo here. It's been a while, and it's been an even longer time since I've played Tainted Pact in Historic. This weekend, the Historic, or, well, the Arena, whatever the Arena Pro Tour is actually called, I don't know the name of it, is going on, and it's Historic, and one of the competitors registered an Esper Tainted Pact deck. It seems like most of what people registered was like Jund mid-range or reanimator decks, basically Crucius, Fable in the Mirror Breaker deck seems like the most popular thing, but somebody registered Tainted Pact. And also the historic metagame challenge is going on, and I've been thinking that Crucius probably would actually be pretty good in Tainted Pact. So I wanted to try playing, instead of Esper, playing a Grixis build. This is pretty similar to previous versions of Tainted Pact that I've played. Uh, the main thing Tainted Pact has gotten recently is now that they've completed the cycle of the fast lands, you can play all the fast lands in your deck. Basically, they printed so many good dual lands on Arena at this point that you can build a, a pretty good mana base. The only problem really is that because you can't duplicate the good dual lands, it is a little bit hard to get a lot of sources in your third color. Um, so right now I'm playing, I think this is 13 red sources if you count Fabled Passage and Forsaken Crossroads. It might be 14, which in a 60 card deck is not that many, so you really don't want to play very many red cards. So I've just got Crucius, Expressive Iteration, and a Braid. In the past, when I played Esper, I've really just played 5 mana Teferi and 4 mana Teferi. And then I would also play Path of Peril, um, which is mostly you would just cast for the 2 black and colorless mode, but every once in a while you'd cleave it for white mana. Uh, so I only wanted to touch on a, a handful of black cards. One thing that's a little bit different is I've got Shieldred in my main deck. I've been playing it in my sideboard for a while. Uh, it's just a really strong card, especially in Historic, where people don't tend to just have tons of one-for-one -one removal that just kills it easily. Like, if you play against a red-black deck, they're probably going to have some stuff that kills it, but it, not even all the removal is necessarily going to be able to hit it, and they just aren't going to have that much removal in general. It isn't like playing Standard, where... You're going to play against a lot of people that have a lot of one-for-one -one removal, and they probably just have a lot of go-for-the-throats in their deck. That isn't the way Historic works. Most people's decks are... The cards are more focused on their game plan, or their removal spells are more oriented towards things that are good in Historic, which is not the kind of stuff that generally kills Shieldred. So I think you can get away with playing Shieldred in a close-to-creatureless deck, which is what I'm doing. Uh, I'm going to give it a try at least. And then Crucius is just like, it might be the most broken card on Arena at this point, like in, in terms of just being ridiculously overpowered. Um, it's certainly a, it, strong enough for Historic. Uh, so I'm going to try playing one copy of that in my deck, which I'm going to have to read it when I cast it to figure out if I want to choose Ambitious or Expedient. Outside of that, it's kind of standard Tainted Pack things. For people who, I guess I should have said this at the beginning, the combo in the deck is basically you want to have this Jace Wielder of Mysteries in play, you want to use Tainted Pact to exile your whole deck and then do something to draw a card, which can just be the plus ability on Jace. Um, or, you know, there's lots of other cards that draw cards in the deck, and then you, you win the game instead of lose the game. That's the way you're going to win most of the games. Uh, you do need to play some, like, sort of backup win conditions just in case, you know, but you lose both your Jaces or you're playing, like, a long, grindy game. So that's why I've got stuff like Shark Typhoon, Shieldred. Crucius, I mean, you could win the game with a 3-3 on its own. That probably would be a little bit harder. But there's also one Hall of the Storm Giants. And in my sideboard now, I'm playing a Leer. Um, I'm going to try Rusko. Uh, for grindier matchups. Rusko might be a little bit on the weak side. Uh, I have tried Worm Coil Engine. I found it to be kind of bad. Uh, I, I think that really Leer and Shieldred are the best options you've got. This is the nerfed version of Leer, which is kind of annoying because even unnerfed Leer wouldn't be like overpowered for Historic, but that's the way Arena works. This is nerfed in Alchemy, so it's nerfed in Historic. Um... Outside of that, I've got one Vampire's Vengeance. 
in my sideboard. I think it might be my best option as a sweeper. Maybe Path of Peril is still better. I'm not, I'm not really sure. I'm giving this one a try. Uh, and then outside of that, it's just a bunch more, you know, one-for-one -one removal that I, I played in the past. If you go and watch some of my other videos. All right, so this could potentially be a long video. I'm going to jump into Historic Metagame Challenge. If I do well, it's going to be a long video. If I do poorly, it's going to be very short. This is not one of the strongest hands in the world because I have neither Tinted Pact nor uh, Jace. Also, why? My opponent just has Typhoid Rats in their deck. Okay. Yeah, that's... I guess I'll discard Mystical Dispute. I don't know. This happens when you play these metagame challenges sometimes where you just play against people who it's not really clear why they decided to enter the event with the cards they have, but it's what they've done. Honestly, if they just play a bunch of bad creatures, they could beat me. So they've entered this event because... They somehow got their holds on Undercity Plunder. I guess I'm going to tend to indulgence in response just to make my options clearer. I think I'll discard Spell Pierce and Island. Oh, I was still resolving the tainted indulgence. Discard an additional card. I guess I'll discard Memory Deluge. I'm backing pretty heavily on them not being able to kill Shieldred, which, out of a mono black deck, you should expect them to be able to kill it, but like this particular person, the cards they have in their deck, it could really just be anything. Mm. One card in the yard. I guess John and Locke is guaranteed to at least kill the Typhoid Rats. Hmm. Alright, I'm going to discard Shieldred now because obviously it's going to be pretty hard to keep Shieldred alive in the face of Liliana. They have a Blood Vial Purveyor, nice. Probably gonna lose now. This is all just an Maybe not. Pretty susceptible to the Liliana just going off though. I think they wanted to kill the Narset first. Many people have made that mistake. One is certainly not the first one. I shall miss your company. <laughs> we all have things we'd rather. This. Yes, then I'm going to discard. Should I discard Sulfur Falls? Or Fatal Push? to Liliana. Well, I guess I wasn't necessarily going to lose, but 
I was about to get Liliana ultimated, which if my opponent had split the lands and the Jace in a tough way, I might have lost to that. feel like there's probably got to be some red cards that I should be playing with that I just didn't think of. I didn't spend the time to exhaustively look at every single red card in Historic. So if you've got a suggestion, leave it in the comments. One thing I will say is I did consider Fable of the Mirror Breaker, and I decided I didn't really want to play it because this deck, obviously, you're not going to be able to take advantage of copying creatures at all. So I'm really just playing like a three mana two two that makes a treasure for me when it attacks and I get to do some looting which obviously that wouldn't be the worst card in the world but I think this is really really far away from being the best Fable of the Mirror Breaker deck the looting power of Crucia seems much stronger so this is like a a discard deck I guess we're gonna say I think I want Rusko because he'll make me a midnight clock. And I guess I want Lear. And I guess I'll play Baleful Mastery and Shadow's Verdict just so I can get Liliana off the board potentially. I did, I board, just boarded in a bunch of creatures and my opponent has Elderfang Disciple in their deck, so I'm going to take out. This Innocent Blood. I think I'll take out Mystical Dispute. Probably don't need Soul Guide Lantern. One more cut. I'm kind of tempted just to cut Inquisition of Kozilek because my opponent did not have the strongest cards in their deck. It was a tough choice when I was trying to figure out how to update the mana base to include all of the fast lands. I decided to continue playing a snow-covered island and an island, and I did that because the having the the things that count as islands makes a bunch of your other lands come into play untapped, which is pretty nice. I think you don't necessarily need to. Like, you could build your mana base with just one island. I mean, you could build your mana base with even fewer if you didn't want to play Fable Passage. I think Fable Passage is good enough that it's worth playing the basics for it. Certainly the basic mountain is not great. But I decided to play Fable Passage and the basic mountain and basic island and snow covered island but only i think i probably only have swamp i only have one of either swamp or snow covered swamp it doesn't really matter which one it is i think my opponents really their only cho chance to win was if they played liliana that turn also i'm really hard pressed to understand why they'd make me discard drown and lock instead of archmage's charm I'm going to continue to not scry with this Maze Mind Tome. I'm under zero pressure. So I might as well just, you know, use it to, to draw cards. I think the game will last long enough that I can draw four cards off of it, probably. Go blank. Let's see if I find something I'd rather discard than Fatal Push. Yeah, I definitely would rather discard Thought Seize. I can always, if need be, cycle Shark Typhoon for zero, and uh, that'll trigger Fatal Push, like if they played, I don't know, Frexian Obliterator or something like that. 
This might be a game where I want... Alright, this is definitely a game where I want to... Cycle Shark Typhoon. So I can Fatal Push the Shieldred. I was about to say, against Mono Black, it is pretty good just to get to have Shark Typhoon in play, but that would be a very long-term plan, and the Shieldred is a short-term problem. So let's get it off the board. My opponent had more cards in their hand. I might want to be a little bit more careful with this Jace Wielder of Mysteries to make sure that it, you know, doesn't immediately die. But they're playing; they only have one card in hand, so there's a decent chance they can't kill it. And I'll just get, you know, card advantage off of it. And as we established in game one, they're a pretty dedicated discard deck. But all right, they can remove it. That's going to prolong the game, but it really, I don't think it's going to hurt my ability to win. Hmm. I guess it's possible I'll cycle Xander's Lounge. Wow, what a juicy target for this braid in my hand. Might as well start get, getting this clock charging up. thing that could be a little bit annoying is it it's going to be a little awkward to sequence my lands for when this sulfur falls is going to come to play untapped oh no this is another just not real deck i guess this thing would seeking is not the same thing as searching so maybe i don't have that many things that would trigger it I did an earlier run in the Historic Metagame Challenge before I decided to record this video, and in that one I played against real decks. I'm certain we'll eventually get to a real deck if I keep winning, or I'll embarrass myself by losing to one of these decks. I guess I should say I'll embarrass myself further. Will the lunch veteran beat me to death? Probably not. Will that thing beat me to death? Yeah, maybe. I'll counter it. I think my opponent is rethinking their their decisions. Who's this on the sleeve? Is it, I guess it's a vampire. Seek new, new knowledge is so good if you have too many lands, but when you don't, when you're hoping to make your land drops, it's actually kind of awkward. I wasn't sure when, uh, like, when Impulse got added and Seek New Knowledge and Tainted Indulgence, which of those was the best, but having played with them for a while, 
I think impulse is definitely the, be the best. Seek new knowledge and tainted indulgence are cards that I could easily see cutting from this deck as you know new options become available. Next week, Snapcaster Mage is going to become available. And I don't think that's going to be like a particularly great card in Historic, but I do think it'll be a pretty good card in this deck. Because it'll allow you to win if you if you just draw Tainted Pact and Snapcaster Mage. With enough mana, you can just win with those two cards, because it, it's similar to just drawing two Tainted Pacts. So I could see Snapcaster Mage replacing... Probably Tainted Indulgence would be an easy switch. I, I guess Snapcaster will probably also get played in that like blue-red Wizards deck that plays Wizards Lightning. But outside of that, I don't think it'll prove to be a very strong card in Historic. It wasn't that fun of a match. It really wasn't. All right, this is going to be a real test of Crucius. Crucius is the kind of card that makes keeping hands like this possible, I would say. I think I'm still going to play the Sanders Lounge on turn one. I'm pretty likely to have Crucius trigger at least once. Merfolk. Nice. So I want to discard this, and I want to choose greater, ambitious. Hey, I found my Jace. It's worth it. It was worth it all along. Next turn, I can play Jace and mill them to uh, power up my drone in the lock somewhat. I discard the Blood Crypt to Crucius, unless... I guess I could draw something even worse than Blood Crypt off of this Jace, but... What would that even be? <laughs> Alright. I'll take it. They didn't even know I had Tainted Pact. They were just done. We're out of here. All right, what do we got? It's good against the Merfolks. Certainly Davriel's Withering. I don't think Ray of Enfeeblement is good enough. Legion's End, certainly. I think I want Shadow's Verdict and Vampire's Vengeance. Vampire's Vengeance is certainly going to be worse than Path of Peril in this matchup. Uh, probably Baleful Mastery. Lear. I think Rusko is not good enough. I think the 3-3 doesn't block all that well. In the games I lose, it, it's going to be because they get a really big board. So the midnight clock isn't going to go off fast enough either. So what don't I want? I don't want Soul Guide Lantern. I usually I usually board out Wishclaw Talisman if I can't think of anything else to board out. I uh, definitely don't want Spell Pierce. Like, they probably have Collected Company in their deck, but... 
it's a little bit overly optimistic, I think, to try to hit a collected company. Two more cards, maybe painful bond. My left total definitely matters in this matchup. Maybe I don't want Baleful Mastery. It's gonna be I'm gonna want to play it for four mana. Four mana kill something is not really a very good deal. Let's try it like this. So they pitched. Oh, they pitched a Jade Light Ranger. Weird. Jade Light Ranger is a really good card. Well, it was in its day in Standard, but it, you can play better Merfolks than that in uh, Historic, obviously, at this point. I forget the name of it. There's a... I think it was in one of, like, the... Historic Anthologies. There's a really, really good three-mana Merfolk. That's kind of what makes Merfolk a, a playable deck. Maybe they're going to try to play it this turn. No. Oh, this is like one of the new Merfolk. That's a pretty good card. They have like a spell pierce type thing. I could be in trouble here. I'm gonna do this just in case they have spell pierce as their last card. I think I'm in good shape as long as language resolves. I'll go get another island out of my deck, I guess. In the interest of thinning. Oh, boo. I'm going to turn one thought sees, I think. is a goblin stack. I don't know that it's worth doing this, but Maybe a little bit optimistic to just hope to wait until I get to four mana and languish and then save everything for after that. Hmm. I think it would have been better, maybe. So this is four gets you seven. So I need to not die to that thing. There's a decent chance I die here. Yeah, it's not even close. I don't think there's anything I could have done differently that game that actually would have mattered. Uh, I want Shadow's Verdict. I think I want Vampire's Vengeance. Certainly want Davergill's Withering. Legion's End is not that hot. They seem to be playing a build that had a lot of the, uh, the three mana, two, two haste guys. Go play that as well. I want Rusko. Rusko I might want. It does block okay. I think I'm going to leave Mystical Dispute in my deck because my deck is a little bit soft to... I don't even... What's the name of that guy? It's been so long since I've played against him. 
Muxus. I don't have a lot of hard counters for Muxus. I certainly don't want Spell Pierce in my deck. Uh, I don't need Soul Guide Lantern. I think I am going to leave Wishclaw Talisman in my deck just because they can't really... There's nothing they can go and get that's really going to screw me that much. I pretty much always live cling to dust in my deck because it, it always cycles at worst. Is it possible I don't want Innocent Blood? That seems kind of crazy. Maybe Tainted Indulgence doesn't do quite enough. I guess I don't need Leer. Maybe I'm going to cut Narset as well. It does feel like I'm pretty likely to just die to Muxus. Well, I don't... Okay, I don't have Aether Gust in my sideboard anymore because Goblins just is not that popular, and I don't have any like Graft Digger's Cage or any of the stuff that people would play that's actually good against Muxus. All right, I've tainted Pact in my hand, so this is a pretty good starting hand. I've got like one of the two combo pieces I need. Hmm. Should I play this on blue? I think I'm gonna play this on blue, and I'm, I'm definitely gonna play Crucius next turn. I think I might want to have the all of Storm Giants in play. So if they have the land that allows them to sack something for two mana, They could use Muxus this turn. Hmm. Do I want to impulse that into my hand? Yeah, I think I think that's good. I guess I'm actually going to omen and see it into my hand. Because I'm going to have access to it in instant speed here. So if they don't kill me this turn, which it appears they're not going to, Rhythm of the Wild, you got it. I guess I could theoretically have something, but I'm still just going to go for it. A Goblin deck just generally does not have a lot of instant speed interaction. It's going to get my Jace off the board here. I think I'd have, like, Fry is probably the most likely card. I think my opponent didn't really understand what my deck was when they sideboarded, because Rhythm of the Wild is not a very good card to have boarded in. Realistically, it's probably just not a very good card in their deck. So far, Crucius has seemed quite good. I think I've gotten pretty lucky with it, but... It's also just... I mean, this is maybe not the best deck for Crucius, but Crucius is really ridiculous.
its ability is going to be quite poor if we get to the point where I have no library and I'm somehow still alive. I wanted to look at what what if seek greater mana value or lesser mana value. So you can never get equal mana value. Interesting. So I can never if I have a four drop and I'm looking for Jace, it's never gonna convert into Jace. I think I'm reasonably happy with how I sideboarded. As I said, I, I don't feel like I have much sideboard that actually helps me very much in this matchup. I need to just combo my opponent before they kill me with Muxus. Do I want to keep this? It's actually kind of bad. I don't have a Jace or a Tainted Pact in my hand. I have the Talisman, which can go get them, but I also have like two other cards that don't really do very much. Yeah, I think I can do better. I'm not gonna go all the way down to five. The other problem with my first hand was I didn't even have double black, so I couldn't even cast the Shieldred. This hand, at least, I can play Shieldred. My lands are gonna be awkward, though. I'm putting this on blue. Maybe I'm not even playing it this turn. I would like to get the scry out of it, but I also want to be able to play a braid and play a uh, Shieldred on turn four. There's the Muxus. Come on, Thought Seize. Ambitious. Please don't kill me. Whiff, whiff, whiff. Okay, they whiffed. This untapped. I'm gonna go with lesser, discarding this, I think. I need to abrade Krenko. Yeah. I, if I choose Ambitious, I just get Shark Typhoon, which that doesn't sound that appealing. these wouldn't mind it uh, to land this turn 
That's not the worst, I guess. Ambitious. Maybe should have attacked. Whoa, oh, we got a Skirk Prospector. Skirk Prospector sighting. I think I'm not going to block with my Shieldred. I'll just take the six. Let's do this first, though, just to see. Maybe it's worth blocking. Try to race my opponent. Is that going to work? Actually, it might. I can also just pass and just leave the Hall of Storm Giants back to block. I think I like doing that. I definitely messed up by not attacking the turn before. Cards they have in their guard three. And they're gonna have to well, I think they're gonna chump this turn. A meld of mox is nice. Yeah, they have to chump this turn. So the fact that I milled them there means they're gonna be up to six cards. So in theory, if I find drown in the lock, I can use that to counter a Muxus. The fact that they're double jumping now means that Mystical Dispute can counter Amoxa, so I think they can't win. I guess I could have some card I'm not expecting that would maybe do something. opponent has Gigantha as a companion. Gigantha is a companion in a shocking number of historic decks. Is this some sort of Jund deck maybe? No, this is like going to be a, a Wizard's Burn deck. Should I keep Spell Pierce? It's probably going to be pretty good. That was a really good draw. It's 
It's a little tempting to spell pierce at this turn, but I think I'd rather just cast Seek New Knowledge. I think spell pierce will probably be good at next turn as well. I'm just gonna I'm gonna take this all. That was pretty nice. really weird sequencing. You know, like guaranteeing they can't get the cards. They can't use the cards very well from the expressive iteration. Sadly, I don't have double, or I don't have triple blue, so I can't just kill them for tapping out here. Probably I'm going to kill them now. They kill me if they have double wizard's lightning or like static discharge wizard's lightning, something like that. They're playing with fire. Die to an opt. So this one I need to be a little bit careful because I need to leave myself a card to draw. I don't think I'm really playing to beat anything. Like if they have a single blue mana with the spell they can cast, which would be Spell Pierce, I guess, or Mystical Dispute, and I'm going to lose. slightly better options for gaining life in this tended pack deck because I found this blue red matchup to be kind of hard just because they're good draws they do kill you really quickly If I was paying more attention, I actually could have played to beat Mystical Dispute because I could have known that my bottom card was Inquisition of Kozilek. Uh, Davril's Withering is good in this matchup. I think Legion's End is good. Duress is good. Miscast is pretty good. Level and Hermit, I don't think is actually that good. Like it just doesn't block well enough. What don't I like in this matchup? I don't like Painful Bond. I don't think I need Soul Guide Lantern, even though they probably have Dreadhorde Arcanist in their deck. I think you, you really need to be focused on killing their creatures. You can't just let the Arcanist sit and play and try to manage it with Soul Guide Lantern. That's not going to work. Uh... Thoughtseize is a little rough against a deck that's planning to lightning bolt you. I 
Lear is a consideration as well. They are going to board in Mystical Disputes, which Mystical Dispute is good against Lear, but once you resolve Lear, Lear obviously turns off the Mystical Disputes. I think I'm going to go without it. All right. Got a kind of slow hand, it looks like. Right away, bang. Not going easy on me. I don't think I need more creature removal. It seems like they kept a hand that just doesn't even have creatures in it. I'm going to get this out. And I am going to scry with it because I want to get to the... I want to get the life gain... Oh, are they, are they going to reckless charge this at my face? Yeah, okay. Fair enough. I will eventually be able to cling that reckless charge. Do I want to duress them? What could they have in their hand? I guess they could have a spell in their hand. They did. Yuck. Gross. I hate it. I should have played this in response to them playing Mentor's Guidance. That was a mistake. Taking, I guess, one extra damage because of that mistake. enough to save me. Probably not. At least beat a land. I don't beat static discharge. Come on, play Soul Scar Mage. Or Symmetry Sage. I hope they have three more Symmetry Sages in their hand. Come on. No. Oh, misclick. No. No. Why did I do this to myself? Oh, and now I even took the wrong. I meant to take a Jace. This is awful.
I guess I could still technically win, but this has been not a very well played game. Well, I misclicked. It wasn't. I didn't intend to play Tainted Pact on turn two for no reason. I should have done that with the, the blue-red land as well. There's actually hints I could have that I could I could win here. I'm probably going to have to block the Soul Scar Mage, which means it could easily die to a Wizard's Lightning. Oh no, I think I'm just dead. Or are they scrying in their upkeep? They're scrying top. They went top. I don't like that. Did they make a mistake or did they misclick, maybe? If I hadn't misclicked, I think I would be... Whoa. Oh, they didn't even attack me. Wow. I hadn't misclicked, I would be at three higher life. If they don't kill me this turn, I think they're not going to be able to win. I need to, I could tan it pack for fatal push. No, fatal push is in my yard. I could tan it pack for cut down conceivably.
Or I could just draw it here. Do I want to attack? I don't think I want to attack. Maybe I was supposed to be a little bit more aggressive. Uh, not sure what's up with that attack. Maybe they thought they had to consider an opt in the graveyard still. Game was a what a mess. My deck, my deck wants me to win though. Maybe it was Shieldred that wanted me to win. This is certainly a, a, a tough matchup, but Shieldred is very good in the matchup as we saw. As I'm starting to play against more real decks, my opponent's having companions more often. I'm noticing a correlation. I'm assuming this is a real deck that has Gigantha as its companion. I drew the dreaded basic mountain. So they have Indatha Triome. Is this going to be like a Niv Mizzet deck, maybe? It's kind of hard to envision a scenario where I'm going to actually cast Cut Down, but maybe I'm going to. I guess I might as well plan on tap land that last turn. This is getting leyline binding. I can sense it. This seems kind of unlikely to win the game for me in this matchup, but maybe it will. They don't have another leyline binding. That's progress. Could really go for seek new knowledge off the top of my deck. Vanishing verse, yuck, gross, lame. No, I was I thought that they were going to vanishing verse the round leyline binding. Help me out a little here, opponent. This is one of the awkward things with playing this tainted pack deck. There really just isn't even a good like thing to do with tainted pack at this point. Although the problem is probably more so that I just drew too many lands. It's going to make it pretty hard to win. About that too many lands, I still think I probably drew too many. I need Crucius, Seek New Knowledge, Jace. If they play Niv Mizzet this turn, I could Tainted Pact for... Mystical Dispute. I'm not going to do it to stop Gigantha. They probably have a handful of removal spells. Like Lightning Helixes and other copies of Lightning Helix. Deafening Clarion. Line Binding. Territorial Kabu.
I might punt it down to 12 this game. That has to count as progress. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna go down to five, and we're gonna craft a plan about what to do with this tainted pact based on what I draw next turn. If it's a Jace. It makes it easy. It would make it easy and that I would try to win. I actually don't think I would be very likely to win, though. Is there even anything I could find? I don't think I even have any two-mana removal spells in my deck that would just kill Gigantha here. A little bit late on finding that Jace. Alright, so I, I am expecting them to just have a ton of removal type stuff. I'm going to try boarding in Rusko. We haven't gotten to play that guy yet. Uh, I th think I want Malevolent Hermit and Miscast in this matchup. And Leer. Definitely don't want Languish. Don't need Soul Guide Lantern. I don't think I want Witch Claw Talisman. It, usually, well, it's quite possible they have Coligan's Command in their deck, and I kind of hate having Witch Claw Talisman in my deck when my opponents have Coligan's Command, because it makes it awkward, because you don't want to just play it and have it sitting in play, which that's part of the value of the Witch Claw Talisman. Cut Down doesn't do anything, as we saw that game. I think I do want a braid because of Crucius and Fatal Push also because of, I can maybe get a Crucius with it. My deck doesn't have a ton of ways to do that, but also for Territorial Kabu. So what else am I cutting? I think Shieldred's fine. It's not like I'm going to brick their Vanishing Verses because they're going to have them for the Jaces anyway. I think I'm going to cut Spell Pierce. Just don't have Miscast in my deck instead of Spell Pierce. A very minor sideboarding upgrade. Question is, do I want Baleful Mastery? I don't know. Maybe this card's just too bad and I shouldn't have it in my sideboard. I used to like Baleful Mastery when... Uh, one of the popular decks was like white blue auras just because it wasn't that big of a deal if you gave those people an extra card and Belfield Mastery just got through all of their various, you know, protection measures. And it was a card you could board in against like blue white decks that had Teferi. I think maybe this format has moved on. Well, they are going to be able to Lightning Helix the Rusko, but that's not really the important part of the card. For our purposes. A little Painful Bond in response to this, in case I hit Miscast or... 
mystical dispute. Spoiler, I didn't hit them. Rusko looks pretty good here. I don't know why they're doing this in their upkeep, but sure. I'll allow it. I'm going to wait one turn before I play this Leer, because it will definitely get Leyline Binding. So I'll wait until a spot where I can get a little bit more value out of it. I guess it's possible they're just going to lay line binding the clock here. Please don't have Nip miss it this turn. Scarab God, what the hell? Might be able to get out of this. Scarab got back. I'm ready to rumble. I think I'm going to start out by opting. Do anything for me? No. I don't really have much in the way of things that kill the Scarab God, do I? Actually, about to take I 
Maybe I don't actually want to play that. I need to chump with Crucius. Or they're gonna lightning helix Crucius and I'm not gonna chump. I need to keep Leer alive so that if I draw Tainted Pact I can keep Leer in play. Alright, I can't win. I don't think. I don't see how I'm going to beat a Dovin's Veto. I think maybe there was. There's one turn where I double drown in the locked. Maybe I could have played that turn a little better. I think now I'm just doomed. Man, this Crucius has been involved in a lot of wins. Mostly from my side. Sometimes from my opponents. Uh, Thought sees them. I don't have enough mana to go like Thought sees Cling, draw Tainted Pact, Tainted Pact. So I'm dead. Alright, okay, run. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I think that that, is, that matchup I just lost is a matchup that is certainly winnable from the tainted pact side it, it really just depends on how your cards line up a lot which is, that's true of the tainted pact deck in all sorts of matchups where i mean there there are good cards in your deck and bad cards in your deck and if you draw the right part of your deck you're gonna win anyway thanks for watching i'll probably make a, another video with whatever the esper tainted pact deck is that gets played in the championships once the lists are published so we can compare and contrast so Stay tuned for that. See you then.